everybody, welcome to another Rusty Mats video and welcome back to my year seven series on number. So we've been going really well through this series. As you can see, quite a lot of lessons have gone by and I've highlighted those already. If you are new to my channel, um, what I am actually doing is running through a series of number topics that you will do in year seven. So you're a year, you are 11 years old, around there, 11 to 12 years old. And I have done them in a specific order. And the reason why I've done them in that order is because the numbers feed back into each other as we go through the different topics. So if you've missed a lot and you want to catch up, click on the pop-out banner up there where you're going to find a playlist of all of the topics I've done so far and in the right order. But if you're just dropping in for a new lesson today, welcome. I am in the fraction sections, we're working with fractions, and in this video today, we are going to express an amount as a fraction of another amount. Let's jump right into it. Before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you will know as soon as a new video has landed. Okay, so we're going to go to express something as a fraction of something else. We're going to start off with some basic example first. And then we're going to go into some things a little bit more complex. So let's say then, let's go into this. Let's say then um, I want to express, express five as a fraction of eight. Well, you would not believe how easy this is and we can pretty much end the video right here because expressing five as a fraction of eight, it just basically means five divided by eight like that, or five over eight. That's done. That's it. But there's more. What if the fractions that you, the fraction that you have made can be simplified? Should you just leave it like that? No, you must simplify it. Most of the times you would be asked for it. If you're not asked to simplify it, that's fine. But you might find that in most cases, nine out of 10, they're going to want you to simplify it. So let's go again. So we're going to express five as a fraction of 20. I probably should go to my writing class again, just to get my writing going. Because as you can see, as I'm writing and talking, I tend to write a lot quicker and then it gets a bit scruffy. I do apologize for that. Anyway, express five as a fraction of 20. Here we go again. Five as a fraction of 20. Easy. Five divided by 20. Done. Got it. Licked. However, this fraction can be simplified. And if you don't know how to simplify fractions, Click on my pop-up banner up there to watch my last video on simplifying fractions. But if you have, you know what's going on, let's go. So we look for the highest common factor of 5 and 20. And the factor that goes into 5 and 20 is 5. So I divide them both by 5. And when I do that, then 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So 5 really is a quarter of 20. Cool, right? It's literally that straightforward. Do you see how it all ties in? Also, a quarter is an equivalent fraction of 5 out of 20. If you don't know what that means, click on my pop-up banner up there and go and have a look at the video that I've made on equivalent fractions. All right, cool. Let's have a couple of real-life examples, okay? So... My friends and I, we went out for dinner one day and it was three of us out there for dinner and the bill came up to a grand old total of 30 pounds, came up to 30 pounds. That was a bill. Uh, so that's for the three of us. OK. And then we decided that we're going to pay off the bill like this. Well, um, I paid 10 pounds. My friend, friend A, they paid 15 pounds. Let's put my pound sign. And then friend B, they paid five pounds. They didn't really have a lot of money. Part-time worker, the story goes on. Let's not even get into it. But anyhow, altogether, 
we have paid 30 pounds, we've paid our bill. So now I want to work out what fraction of the bill did friend B pay? Because clearly, you know, we got to keep an eye on this person. You know, they're not really forthcoming with the money, are they? Anyway, what fraction of the bill did they pay? Well, friend B, they paid five out of 30 because they paid five pound, but the bill was out of 30 pounds. And then we can simplify that by dividing by five again, only to find out that a fraction of the bill that they paid is one sixth, because five divided by five is one, 30 divided by five is six. So they paid one sixth of the bill. Yeah, that's not very good, is it? How much did I pay? Let's find out how much I paid. So I paid, well, I paid 10 out of 30. They're both multiples of, uh, sorry, um, yes, multiples of 10. So I'm going to divide by 10. And so when I divide by 10 there, that's going to be the highest common factor, divide by 10. And that's going to be one. So I paid one third of the bill. But then you might be thinking, but hang on, Mr. Ross, that doesn't make sense because look at these numbers. My number is smaller than this number down here. So why is that happening? Well, the reason why that is happening is because the smaller the denominator, the bigger the chunk. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the chunk. Check that out in my intro video. You can click on a pop-up banner up there where I introduce what fractions are and you're gonna see more things like that, okay? All right, let's do one last real life example and, um, and get going. So I am going to bake a cake. That's my cake there. Now the cake is gonna be a pretty heavy cake, you know. I'm gonna make this cake uh, 500 grams. So it's half a kilo cake, it's a pretty hefty cake. Now. Before I can make my cake, I need to put in 100 grams of sugar. Why? Well, cakes are sweet and lots of people like loads of sugar. So yeah, go figure. So um, I'm gonna put 100 grams of sugar. And if I got that wrong, please leave it in the comments below. You can tell me off all about it. Clearly I don't bake cakes, <laughs> you can tell. But um, if I got it wrong, tell me in the comments below. Anyway. What fraction of my whole cake is going to be sugar? Well, yeah, and if you see this on a real cake, then you probably shouldn't have that cake because I'm already thinking it's too much sugar. Anyway, so the sugar is going to be 100 grams out of the whole size of the cake, 500 grams. Well, the highest common factor between 100 and 500 is 100. So I'm going to divide by 100 at the top divide by 100 at the bottom or the numerator and denominator respectively and then that's going to mean that one fifth of the cake is going to be sugar leaving four fifths for everything else is this real let me know in the comments below do we put that much sugar in a cake is a cake normally 500 grams? I don't know, I've just made it up. Anyway, that's all today for expressing as a fraction. If you've learned something new, give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. What are you waiting for? Come on, do it, do it, go on. All right, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another upload. But for now, until I see you on the next one, Peace.